Right now I wanna talk about the one of the most important aspects of making key shot animations look nice and smooth and fluid, and that is motion easing, also known as animation curves. We've got a lot going on in this scene already. I will go ahead and just get rid of this fade. So I'm gonna select both of those holding control and then right click and delete. And then for this pivot, this red cylinder here, I'm just going to hide and lock it. So right click and choose hide and lock. So it's out of our picture. I wanna move the turntable to the beginning and I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. So it's gonna take just two seconds to do a spin. When we select this animation, you'll see that we have under our time setting something called motion ease and it's set to linear by default. Linear is a constant rate of motion. So it's, it's very boring, but it's what you see here. Then we can change to ease in, which is our first preset. It starts out slow and then it ends up faster. We can do the opposite, which is ease out. Starts out fast, ends out slowing down. We can do an ease in, ease out, which means we start slow, speed up, then slow back down. And finally, we have custom, and this is where things get really interesting. If it's the first time you've seen something like this, don't be intimidated. You can center this little green line by clicking the fit to view here, or zoom to fit. The way this works is this green line is giving us a visual representation of the rate of change or speed that this animation has. So along the X axis, we have time, and on the Y axis, we have zero to one. The zero to one represents like zero to 100% of this overall animation or transform that we defined up above. So as we progress in time over the course of two seconds, we end up getting to going from zero to 100% of that 360 rotation. Now let's use this to, in order to practice, let's use this custom curve to reproduce all of our presets. To do an ease in, we wanna start out slow and end up faster. So we're gonna grab this square, drag and hold shift so it snaps horizontally, drag it to the right a little bit. And then we'll grab the other square at the other end and drag it down till we kind of line up that blue line with the green line. This is gonna give us what's called a speed ramp. We start out, if we play it back, we start out slow and then it speeds up. And that's because we are, as we progress through time, we are not moving through very much of that rotation. And then toward the end, we move through most of it. We can do the opposite in order to create what's called easing out. So here's an ease out. And we can create an ease in, ease out, also known as an S curve by dragging these like that and we get something like this. Now this is where you really start to have a lot of nice control over how something behaves and whether it's a camera or a part that you're animating, adding these custom curves is gonna really breathe life and a sense of dynamic movement into your animation. The more vertical this line gets, the faster it's gonna move. So for example, if I really want something to spin slow then fast, we can do something like this and it creates a nice flicking motion. Really, really cool. Uh, we could do you know, all sorts of custom stuff. We could also add more control points. So for example, I can click in the middle, right click, and then add a key. And if we take this and start to move it, we can actually create a nice little slowdown that happens in the middle. To make that more Apparent, I'm going to start and end the curve in more of a linear fashion. So let's watch this. So it slows it down and speeds back up. Really cool. If we want that slowdown to be more drastic, we need to take these handles and make them more horizontal. So if I hold shift and make them truly horizontal, you'll notice that we ease in and ease out, but we also end up kind of pausing in the middle, which looks a little bit unnatural. We don't want it to pause. Maybe we just want it to slow down. So if that's the case, we need to grab and make these not truly horizontal, but just have a little bit of an incline. And if we play that back, it should look a little bit nicer now. And then based on how long these are, 
you have control over how long it takes to ease in and ease out here. You can see pretty quickly that we get lots of control once we start playing with custom curves. Another thing we can do is use these to control different types of movement. So in this case, we did a turntable, but what happens if we try to apply a custom curve to these screws on this lock plate? Uh, something I'm gonna call out is I've moved my camera now and I've not saved it. If I go back and play our animation, you'll notice we snap back to the previously saved camera location. Be careful and just remember that if you go back to play an animation, it's going to revert your camera back to the last position it was saved in. So if I wanna update this, I have to save the camera. Back to our animation, if we want to look at these screws and this lock plate coming off, but we wanna make them a little bit more exciting, let's try a custom curve. Change our motion ease to linear, or sorry, custom, and what I wanna do is basically make them move out fast and then end up slow. So that's gonna be an ease out. So I'll pull this up and I'll pull this up like this. Let's just try it like this first, see how this looks. So I'll play that back. So they kind of explode out. Maybe they're a little too fast. So what I could do is start off with a little ease in, ease out, but that's still way too slow. So what I could do is I could add a key and I could bring this over here kind of recreate what we had here. And we could just have this ease in a little bit. Let's see how that looks. That's really cool. So I'm gonna copy that, and believe it or not, we can copy and paste curves onto other parts or animations. So I've selected my plate moving away, change it from linear to custom, and then paste curve. Now these two, will have that same dynamic movement. Really, really nice. If you want, you could also multi-select animations. So holding control, you could select more than one and you could paste or copy a curve. Uh, the last thing I wanna point out, what happens if we drag our control points for the curve too far? So when the lid opens, let's say we wanna do a custom curve. And we'll center, let's see, you zoom to fit, drag this down. Now, what if we want to kind of ease in, ease out? Pretty simple. But what happens if we accidentally, say, drag this handle up too high, like this? I'm gonna exaggerate it so you can see, but basically the green line goes past the one in the y-axis, what happens? Well, you'll see as the lid opens, it actually goes too far and intersects with the box itself. That's because in our rotation, we defined 180 degrees and we went more than 100% 100 of 180 degrees. So it actually ends up going too far and then it bounces back. Just be aware, you don't want that to happen typically. If we drag this one down in the beginning, we get the same type of behavior. So notice before it opens up, it's actually gonna go in the opposite direction and then it course corrects. So just be aware, you don't wanna do that typically, but knowing that you can do that may uh, unlock some doors for you as well. So that's a summary of custom curves or motion easing. I love these features to death and that's honestly how you take your animation from being basic to having some serious elegance to it.